This is the uh, PlayStation Pad Test 1.0 <clears throat> or PS1, PSX, PlayStation 1, whatever you want to call it. It's a, an app that <clears throat> you can load. It's homebrew. Um, you have to have a method to load it, but it will show if your pad is good or not. This is very good to test with if you get a pad. If you have something to load these these types of discs, then you can actually test if a pad is good or not, which is not too useful um, most of the time, but if you get a pretty rare one, like, uh, oh, I'm dropping stuff. This, uh, this one that I'm doing right now, most of you may know or think you know, this is not a dual shot controller. This is actually a dual analog. These are actually concave, both of these. And the dual analog, if you press it once, Turns red. There you go. Press it again, it turns green. Not supported. But, as you can tell, they light up as you press them. And this I thought it was a bit weird. You press uh, the L and R2, and they're more lined up like this. Except then they'd be on the other side. So I don't know how the designer of this app thought that one through. Although, I mean, he did more than I, I could. I can't design this. So this one seems to work just fine. You do analog stick. We'll go through a couple of different ones. That one's good. This I was happy to find in some random It's like a consignment shop. This guy, the red one. It's your basic PlayStation controller. Seems to work just fine. Although sometimes I'll have problems with the start. See, and that's why it's good for diagnosis. Press X. I don't know if you can tell too much right here, but it only lights up about half the time. Or if you really press it, uh, select. I need to find a way to get the lighting down in this room. It's either on or off in here. So that one works good except for start and select. Let's go with a dual analog controller. And I've got these all wrapped up like they shouldn't be. Never just wrap your wires around your controller. It is convenient, but honestly it'll wreck the damn things. Plug it in. See how it just pops up automatically in the bottom? This one seems to work just fine. Oh wow. You press it, I don't know if you can hear that. For those of you that don't know or have never fixed these guys, you hear the higher vibration on the right side, lower on the left. What they did was, <clears throat> it's pretty smart. They put these little poles about halfway down. We can actually see them in these. And they, they spin right here. This one has a heavier weight. On the right side, it's got a lighter weight. And they they could do those to varying degrees with whatever game. It would be full force or partial. I can't really turn it any sort of degrees with this. It's just either on or off. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still getting over my cold. An interesting tidbit with these guys. Let me get this out. Now this is a wonky controller, nothing too bizarre, it's a game on controller, it's got a black cord, if you see this right there, it's very, very corny, so what, it doesn't even have the label, if you don't know, most controllers don't have these anymore. They either have them built in, just some part of the controller or the system itself. They used to have the FCC regulations on them, which my camera is not focusing on. But it basically specifies that it will not provide any interference, but it has to accept any interference that it gets. Um, and then these are pretty much magnets. 
and so it kills any interference you get and that's why they were so close to the system it'll kill it from here to the system itself but not from here to here but an inch isn't going to make that much difference so these guys i've never taken one of these apart but i can't imagine this tiny little thing that doesn't weigh much this cheapy old plastic is going to do anything at all especially if it doesn't have the the fcc warning on it that's i imagine it's just for looks let's plug this in This is game game on. Game mon. I can't really tell. Trademark, although I've never heard of it. This seemed to work, although this feels a bit cheap. The L2 works as, about as much as the R2, but it's sunken in. Just imagine the plastic broke. Let's see what these do. Start. Analog. Not sure it just kind of flips out. Anyway, I'm not too interested in that controller. It seems like a piece of junk. Now this, <clears throat> this company makes probably my favorite controllers. I, I would say they are, I'd say a, a second party. Um, any, any company that makes something that's not the actual party to it, like say uh, Sony or Nintendo, any company that makes another controller or any peripheral is considered third party. But these guys have so much backing from Nintendo, especially now with the Switch, and they did with Sony years ago, and now they have the first wireless um, controller for the, the PS4 is Hori. And let's see if we can get that to focus. Probably not. But this controller is amazing. Although the D-pad is a little bit weird looking, it actually is very responsive and feels fantastic. And they always seem to have the support of the company behind them to get their logos on. It has the actual PlayStation logo. These are very, very responsive. They're very quick. And the funny thing about this, what I just talked about with the FCC, is they didn't have the warning on them either. But they also didn't try to fake it by including anything on here that like a, um like the uh let me say battery the magnet to try to fake it they just simply didn't didn't use it but <clears throat> where the company always puts their name they put hori so that's also interesting i don't know what's up with these guys that company is awesome in my opinion now i'm gonna actually try to do a dual shot two on here again don't wrap your controllers like this this will screw them up over time I did this before I knew what I was doing with these and how to preserve them, and they sat forever. Well, this is cool. Um, the FCC warning is actually stamped in the DualShock 2. That's crazy. So I'm going to pop that in. Oh, wow. It's actually backwards compatible with the PlayStation. Well, these have varying degrees of how hard you push them. This seems to work. This controller is a bit busted up from overuse, but yeah, this uh, the uh, pad test 1.0. I don't know if there's ever a second one or 1.1, but uh, I'll try to find where I got this from and post a link to it. It's really handy if you can get something to to load on the PlayStation. I use the Game Enhancer 2 um, to to brew home, to brew um, to boot Homebrew. Um, and it seems to work pretty well as, as anything as I can throw at it seems to load, unless I burn it wrong. Um, the only thing that seems more simple is the Dreamcast, and the GameCube is way harder to burn stuff for. So it is kind of middle of the road, as long as you can get something to boot on here. Um, homebrew isn't that difficult. Uh, as long as you can burn it to a disc in an ISO, uh, because, or, or BNQ, which that'll work too. Now with the Dreamcast, you have the Dream Shell and various other ways to load it. With the GameCube, you have Viper GC, you got Xeno GC, or there's Cube if you can find it. There's various ones. With the PlayStation, I don't know of anything to load Homebrew except uh, booting from the disc. So if you have a way to do that, this is actually a very helpful way to test thing. I, I, I would say any sort of game store 
um, any retro game store that takes these kind of products in. This would be very helpful to, although it seems counterintuitive, to mod your system and then be able to test these things. So I don't know of any sort of thing, maybe from Sony, that would test these on no Nintendo. Had a Nintendo test pad stuff way back in the day. You could test RF switches and whatnot, but I've never seen anything quite like that except for the one unit from Nintendo. So this is this is pretty useful if you got a whole collection you just want to test your stuff or if you like repairing things and you want to know why something isn't working because if you're playing a game and it works sporadically you may not know why it's doing what it's doing so this is this is very handy thanks